Hi Pisces, welcome to your January 2018 love reading. It's Raina here. And as I record this, I am in the second week of December. So even saying January 2018 is kind of exciting because we always uh, look forward to a new year and the possibilities of a new year. So um, that's really cool. I want to let you know that I have um, the 2018 general uh, tarot forecast available on my channel. So check that out if you haven't seen that yet. I've done your sign <laughs> at, uh, at the time of this recording, as well as a Vimeo love reading for 2018. And uh, the link for the, the love reading is below. Now, the love reading is specifically for people who are single because... As it turns out, it seems like I'm always doing relationship readings. I don't label them as relationship readings, but it just comes out that way. And I've kind of resigned myself to that. And uh, whenever I try to talk about singles in these readings, it doesn't seem like it, it goes that direction. But I will try to keep that in mind as I do this. So anyway, let me just keep these. Oh, one thing I should say astrologically is that on January 1st, there is a supermoon, full moon, in Cancer, okay? I believe it's at 11 degrees of Cancer. So obviously, Cancer is a fellow water sign uh, for you, and it's your fifth house of romance. So you may have some kind of an experience where you, if you're dating someone, you may discover information about them that you didn't know. You know, sometimes full moons can bring out secrets. Or you may have a platonic friend that you realize is something more than that because the fifth house is falling in love. And the full moon can be a time of aha moments where you have these insights into a situation that you didn't have before. So putting that together, you could be having that about someone who's platonic. And then you find out that this is actually the person for you. So let's see if the cards kind of mirror that astrological energy. It could be like a relationship that you've been having, you decide to end it too, especially if some secret comes out that you didn't want. But... Um, <laughs> Okay, well the first thing that I notice is how much uh, fire energy is present here. Fire energy could mean, uh, with the wands I'm talking about, I'm just trying to get this even. And um, the, the wands connect with fire signs in uh, astrology. Uh, if you don't know that much about tarot cards, the four suits, which are pentacles, and we have pentacles represented here. Pentacles are connected to the earth element, and then we have the, the uh, water with the cups, and fire is connected to the wands, and what's the other one? <laughs> the swords are the air signs. So with all of this, it's like a battle between the fire and the earth <laughs> with this reading, uh, Pisces. And the difference between those two elements is that one is very practical, the pentacles, earth, and one is very enthusiastic, the fire, the wands. You are, you can go either way as a Pisces. I always put the water signs with the earth signs as the pragmatic ones. Even though water signs can be quite irrational because of their emotional nature, they tend to be concerned with practical matters from everything that I have observed. 
and just like the the earth signs and they go along with the earth signs also because they're feminine signs so looking at it from that perspective I can see you kind of siding with team pentacles but you are you I think you are the least practical of the of the uh, water signs you know because you have a tendency to be a dreamer and actually this page of cups is being a dreamer now I was just thinking of that John Lennon song imagine it goes they say you know I'm a dreamer I'm not the only one and there's nothing wrong with being a dreamer you have to dream in order to manifest right and the people who live very narrow lives tend to just kind of keep their nose to the grindstone and and a lot of times pentacles people are doing that they're just like putting one foot in front of the other and you know working towards things which are tangible which they can hold in their hands but you are someone that's interested in in the not the intangible the things of the the spirit and the things of creativity so um, there may be like a person who has been in your life that was more of a influence that was practical and for some reason either you rejected it or you you know and and you would reject it Pisces because it may not have seemed exciting enough for you so you know romantic enough because you are very romantic so in the past position we have the nine of pentacles and this is a card of somebody who is supporting themselves and very uh, could could indicate prosperity that they but they're able to do it by themselves they don't need somebody uh, to depend upon and the fact that this is represented uh, by a woman I think is significant because even in 2017 sometimes you can have like in especially like with money issues if a woman is pooling her resources with a man it can make it harder for her to be independent um, because she can't necessarily stand on her own two feet if she's for instance a mother and she's working part-time you know all those things that could come into play but there is this sense of in the past position someone now this could be the other person that you were with that's an earth sign uh, your opposite sign is Virgo and I wouldn't be surprised if this card connects with a Virgo because it is a nine and September is the ninth month and Virgo dominates the month of September astrologically so and that's Pentacles so I'm thinking that that could be specifically your opposite sign Virgo the other earth signs are Taurus and uh, Capricorn and in the month of January we have that Capricorn energy and so that could also be coming into play and um, I was just thinking in terms of like Saturn, Saturn, Saturn going into Capricorn. But that's, for, for you, that's your 11th house. And the 11th house is the luckiest house. So in January, you never know what's going to happen, Pisces, because uh, the 11th house could be the time when you see your dreams come true. The 11th house is the house of hopes and wishes. It's also the house of friendships, so you may meet somebody through a friend. Okay, let's see. So that was the past, and now we have a card representing the, well, let me just say this. This is kind of the overall theme, and yes, it's in play in the present time, but it's meant as more, more of a, a theme than just some kind of chronology, okay? like a chronological event. So we're looking at the Six of Wands. This is a card, I would say, especially of career success. Um, and y career or some kind of creative success where you are being recognized, you are like uh, feeling proud of some accomplishment or other people are saying, wow, this person, this Pisces person did that. 
and it's about taking your bow. Again, though, if we're looking at it in terms of the theme of an influence, this could be somebody else who happens to be like a Leo. And I'm, I'm specifically saying that sign because I always connect it to that card. I don't know if it really is. Definitely fire energy, though. And even for the present, uh, we have this is connected to Sagittarius. And, and here's a card that I connect with a different fire sign. I connect this with Aries. But whatever is going on, let's assume that that Six of Wands is connected to this Knight of Wands. This is a person who is, you know, for lack of a better word, a womanizer, okay? But let's put it this way. I mean, a womanizer might be kind of a harsh way of putting it, but this is a good time, Charlie. Somebody that you um, can have adventures with, and a lot of times they will be se sexual adventures, you know, to, to keep it real here. Um, this person doesn't want to settle down, but you see, the Nine of Pentacles does want to settle down, and Pisces what do you want to do in, in your love life at this time in your um, journey in, in, in this lifetime? Do you want to really settle down? Because some of you may be coming from a very predictable relationship. Um, you may have had financial security. That Nine of Pentacles can speak of um, that kind of um, cushy, existence that may have been with your part your former partner and yet there was something missing I always think I know this is going to get me in big big trouble and I hope that um, I don't offend any Pisces people but I think that sometimes uh, Pisces people can be fickle I don't know if some of you will balk at that or if you will agree with me. Now obviously I'm broad brushing because I, I know that some of you are, will, will be incredibly loyal and this will especially be true if your Venus is in Aquarius, uh, believe it or not, or um, Taurus. I think you might be able to have, yeah, you could have Venus in Taurus, early degree. If you're, well, I'm not going to get into that, but those two are fixed signs, so that's always a possibility. But in general, you may be somebody who is, um, you know, love the one you're with type of person. And it's not immorality. It's simply that you have the capacity. You have a big capacity to love and to go with the flow. You know, that water flows and you're immutable signs so you're very open to new experiences and uh, some of those may be romantic experiences and this knight of wands is very exciting because he is not stable and there's something about Pisces people where they love to I'm not going to say uh, walk on the wild side but they definitely uh, seem to gravitate towards people who uh, don't play by the rules sometimes. And um, whether it's because you want to be of assistance to them or you simply just have that part of, of you that needs to, that craves excitement and craves uh, that, that sense of uncertainty that this Nine of Pentacles probably lacked then um, that may be what draws you in. But just remember that that sort of person, they can be exciting for the short term, but they may not stick around. And I find that dynamic where people tend to be excited by people who seem uh, edgy and uh, like you, you know, unpredictable, but then they get frustrated because that person is edgy and unpredictable. The, the very thing that attracts them ends up irritating them. And um, so anyway, let's look at the spiritual message of this situation. The Seven of Pentacles. 
This is a card of patience and of, you know, seeing if something really has the ability to produce fruit. This is the farmer's card. And so that makes me think that some of you may have thrown in the towel uh, with a relationship, this past relationship, too soon because you were feeling that there was it was just going to be dull and you couldn't see it lasting. This is a card where you have to wait and see. You have to take that kind of approach. But if you're the kind of person who tends to be impulsive and you want something now, again, if you have personal planets in Aries uh, right next to you, which is very possible, or a moon, you know, in Aries, you may be very impatient and it's hard for you to wait around for something. You want that flash. And uh, the Knight of Wands produces that flashy exterior, but there could be an empty relationship to show for it. And the, se the, the pentacles that are promised with the Seven of Pentacles is someone who's dependable, someone who is going to be there for the long haul. And if that seems like a, a quality that is not what you want, then I think you have to question what your values are, what you, what you really are looking for in terms of relationship. You may have a, um, a view of relationships that's not uh, is not necessarily that healthy and this is very common especially if somebody has grown up with a cha chaotic household or something along those lines so just um, asking you to look at it from that point of view from the spiritual point of view of what is the ultimate goal, end game that you have. What crosses you is the Six of Pentacles. In some cases, this can be, uh, you know, you see this person who looks to be at a high, you know, of a higher class economic level than the people asking for a handout for some money. And so there's that disparity between incomes. And it shows that, that, um, that one person is giving and one person is taking. And this is also illustrated by the fact that he's got scales to show the, the equity in the situation, trying to, to balance things. In this particular case, for some of you, if you find that you're looking at relationships as some kind of a commodity, and that you have to pay to play. If you're getting in, sucked into something where somebody's using you financially, then that that could be problematic. And you could have a bad boy. And uh, you know, I'm I'm using gender because this you know that's a court card, and so I'm going along with the literal definition. You could be uh, buying their affection. Another possibility is that there is not give and take in the relationship, whether it's specifically with material goods. But it could just be in terms of emotional or valuing the relationship. If you look at pentacles, money and value, you know, are you with somebody or do you tend to attract people who are as into you as you are into them? Or does it seem like it's one-sided? Because that could be something that keeps showing up for you and perhaps creating, um, and, and actually perhaps that is a red flag that you need to nip in the bud in the first place. The advice of what's coming in is represented by the Page of Cups. This can be, uh, by the way, this, <laughs> you know, talking about water signs, this one is directly connected to Pisces, and, you know, if you look at the fish, you can see why. But also, this card is about innocence. 
And so this could be a new relationship that is formed with somebody and it is of a very, um, what would you say, um, wholesome and emotionally pure situation. So to contrast it to this Knight of Wands, um, the Knight of Wands is a situation where it could be an affair. It could be like a one night stand or a series, like a booty call situation. Somebody, um, when I said booty call before somebody uh, wrote to me, that they thought that was funny. I, I don't know, maybe, you know, is that like a, an outdated phrase now? I, I just think, I, I, I don't think they've perfected uh, that word, that phrase. So I don't know, like a hookup. But it's something that is not meant to last. And the person that, that you are engaged with could be somebody who is uh, unable to commit. They may promise that they're going to commit, but it never seems to happen. So with the Page of Cups, look at your tendency to be gullible, to, to believe what you hear. Okay, that is key because you could be strung along by somebody and then realize six months, a year down the road that they have no intention of um, settling down. And um, by the way, that, that Knight of Wands may even be somebody where you try to call them and con you know contact them and they're never there. And you're always like, where are they? You know, and you get sucked into that game of like, um, you know, trying to get a hold of them and they're so elusive. But that just adds to the allure, you know, because it's like when somebody is hard to get, it's it makes it all the more attractive. You know, that, that person who may be a pentacles person, by the way, that past... A partner, Nine of Pentacles, they may not be a sun sign in Earth. They might be any element, but they would have a very strong predictability because it's a reliability. We, we look at predictability as a bad thing because, you know, people equate it with being with a boring person, but actually it's somebody that you can depend upon. And they are like um, salt of the Earth, and very, um, very much a rock. And this other person is like a, an ember of a flame, you know, uh, some kind of a burning ember. They're very sexy and very passionate, but they burn out very quickly. Also, by the way, too, um, the Page of Cups could be a message that you receive that where somebody is professing love to you. So if there's um, some other water sign that comes into your life, this could be a fellow Pisces or a Scorpio or a Cancer individual. The outcome is the Three of Wands. And because I got that card in the, in the middle here of the Six of Wands, this may even be connected to your career, where you're either uh, moving or, or at least traveling with for your work. And so there's that sense of you're going to expand your horizons in the in the near future. And um, or maybe this is just a mental state, but you are really connected with your career, almost like an entrepreneurial energy that I'm seeing here. And what I take from that outcome card is that it may be that you continue on with this fire sign individual for a while, but you are, it's possible if you have met a new person, there's three parties now that you're seeing both of them. Uh, but you've, you're also just really basking in the glow of having a lot of career matters going your way. So you may not even be ready to settle down yourself. I feel like maybe this has something to do with the fact that you've had Saturn in your 10th house of career for two and a half years. 
that you have really laid that groundwork so that you can um, experience a lot of um, great success in your future. And this is kind of like the beginning stages of uh, kind of all of that coming home. And the, even this card could speak to the harvest coming in for you. So I really like this reading, uh, Pisces. I noticed that there are no minor uh, major arcana cards so it may simply be that this is kind of day-to-day -day energy in January where things are not changing radically but you are seeing things in a more expansive way and that can only help you in, in terms of uh, deciding where to go next. Okay well I hope you enjoy this and if you'd like a private reading with me um, just to note if you are listening in 2017, I still have 20% off of all my readings, including my love readings. The, the website is rainamoonastrology.com. The coupon code is JUPITER, all, caps, all capital letters, but it's only until the end of 2017. So if you're watching this in 2018, the sale will be over, okay? And um, anyway, I wish you a happy 2018, especially the start of this year, and all the best to you. Take care. Bye.